Today we wanted to talk about how the government affect your purchasing your home. But first, let's hit it! Hi, this is Ellen Victoria. Welcome to our channel. And if this is your first time in our channel, you wanted to know everything about Greenville, Winterville, and surrounding area all the way to the Raleigh, please subscribe in our channel and also get notified when we put a new video for you. Honestly, we get calls, texts, and emails all the time from people looking to upsize, downsize, relocate, shift, my favorite word, um, or just buy their very first home. I love helping everybody who is looking for a home. I love shopping for a home and looking at all these homes is just so much fun. So I exactly. hope you have fun with us and that's it. Let's, let's hit it, no? Let's hit the list. Today, basically, we wanted to uh, put you in a nice route and explain a step by step what's going on in the market and then how the government played out for the housing market, especially the Federal Reserve. Okay, before, before he gets into the history, I do want to kind of throw in, because I know we're going to go to history, current events, and all of this stuff, but I want to throw in, okay, the government cannot control the price of my gas. They cannot control the price of eggs but they can control how much interest you're going to pay when you buy a house. It's a direct correlation to home buying. So that is why this is super important when you are thinking about buying a home. So we're gonna use these lofty things like the FOMC, but really it does affect you directly and I'm gonna to try to bring that to you. So let's now, let's hit it. Therefore, first we wanted to talk about FOMC, Fancy Ward. What it is? The Federal Open Market Committee. Um, and then what they are doing at their meetings in Washington with the 12 reserve board members and the, you know, the chairman. So. Therefore, 12 members, seven members are Federal Board of the Governor and five members Federal Bank Presidents. Mm -hmm. And basically, what is the federal chair is? The chair? Typically is the one from New York. And Mr. Powell. Mr. Powell, yes. Mr. <laughs> Powell is the federal chair. And basically, every time that they have a meeting, they release the minutes of the meeting three weeks after the meeting. Right. And let's start with the history of what happens in interest rate. During the coronavirus 2021, we had the lowest interest rate in history. All of us got spoiled with that. And every time people calling us, hey, uh, this is not a good interest rate, but I know but it's that that was unprecedented in the history of America. Yeah, but let's just start day. from January 2022, yes. when the Federal Reserve, for the first time, they started to have the meeting and helping to beat the inflation. No? Absolutely. So right now, honestly, at their meeting, what happened was at first we just went back to norm. What ha I mean, people were complaining about these mortgage rates, but the truth is they were back to the norms of the 2020 pandemic and the craziness of all that so we did go low you know that lower historically crazy low are gone they're probably not coming back um and at first it was seemed okay right yes therefore in january when they had the meeting they didn't uh, change the target rate for the interest rate and when they came to the first time in the march 15 and 16 they had the meeting they changed 0.25% the target fund rate. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. And basically, uh, at that point, uh, the interest rate is start historically from zero to 0.25% going to 0.25 to five, half a percent respect to the last year. And what happened in the May, just in the 4th of May, what happened um, there? Again, a half a percent increase. Half a percent increase. But remember, this increase was unprecedented since 2006. Therefore, since 2006, we didn't have that increase of half a percent by the Federal Reserve. Now, we are looking, if you add this one to the range that I told you, we are looking at the new range, respect to the last year, 0.75% to 1% increase rate. And which is the first time in 20 years of a housing market in United States. Okay, so pretty much the Fed can only do a certain amount of things. So when they are looking to try to fix this crazy inflation, we're going to talk about that with all of the stuff we were talking about. They can only increase or re re decrease those interest rates. They can increase or decrease the treasury notes, and then they can increase or decrease the Fed, what the Fed 
Federal Reserve at the bank is. So they can put the reserve ratio at the bank higher or lower. These are the only things that they can do for monetary policy. These are the only things that bankers can decide that they need us to do um, in order to fight something big like inflation. So I know that that's next. We're going to talk about those treasury notes and the treasury exactly. debt. So what does that mean? Therefore, in June and August, basically, the government have the plan, central bank plans to unwind $30 billion in treasury debt and $18 billion in mortgage backed uh, debt are selling. each month. Uh, they're fighting inflation. They are selling these bonds. So that is exactly what a normal thing that they do when they are trying to fight exactly. inflation. So, and basically, what, what is going to happen in September? What the, gonna, they're going to sell more. In September, for a reserve, it's going to be double amount of the debt. Uh, and it basically goes to $60 billion. Okay, that's not a right word because what we have never defaulted on our bonds in U.S. history. Um, and we are considered one of the safest bets out there within terms of bonds. What he means by debt is he means that we are selling bonds. bonds. It doesn't mean that we are selling debt. I have the econ teacher like, so next So I just want to kind of throw out there, he used a bad word. I know that's probably something he read on the internet, but that's not necessarily true. We have never not paid on our bonds. When people buy a bond, they're generally considered safe. And so the fact that they're going to sell 60 million bonds is still a normal thing so don't freak out when you heard the word debt so I kind of want to throw that out there therefore let's throw an example here for the sake of sharing with you what happens that is gonna affect you no therefore in December 2021 yes. before we had the increase rate in March 2022 uh, the 30-year fixed APR was 3.11 the average which is amazing and um, then so when may 4th the government actually increased the interest rate for half a percent the target rate we were looking at the fixed rate almost 5.27 percent which is uh it's much a long-term norm it's more of a long-term norm at those five now when we go higher than five that is when things get crazy and that is where things might start happening very soon therefore but how they are still normal so if you're buying now you're still locked into a normal rate which has been around for a long time so don't think you're getting ripped off just yet therefore if you're looking at the five hundred thousand dollar house which is the average in holy us for buying a house in this current market with the interest rate that you had in December 2021, 3.11%, you are looking at principal plus interest, $2,138. And now with the interest rate at the end of the May, we were looking at the same house, $500,000 at $2,767 per month. per month over 30 years. So you can see how that interest rate directly affects your monthly payment. So let's talk about what anything else you want to do before we go into the CPI. Well, uh, what do we, we have that. anything? Okay, my wife said we did something about the government, and, and we now did. we wanted to talk about what we're going to talk about now. I wanted to go to CPI. Did I miss CPI. something? CPI. Therefore, my wife wanted to talk about CPI. What is the CPI? Okay, is? so CPI is cost, and they've been changing how they do the calculation, which is crazy. But it's basically how they calculate inflation and how much all of our costs are going up. Consumer, uh, uh, consumer price index. That is a stands for CPI. It's how they, and they've been changing how they do it, which is kind of really frustrating. Um, <laughs> wait, when it's happening, and we need the calculations. Most they're changing the calculation, which is crazy. It did slow. They seem. Um, what was the April? inflation in the February and March? What, what was it? Was it? What was it? The CPI rate in February and March was 8.5%, okay, which was the highest since 1981. Therefore, I, historical high in 41 years. And just to give you a comparison, in 1981, if you were buying a home, your interest rate was 15%. So when we talk about 5%, think, okay, 15%, that's crazy. Um, okay, so now let's talk about April 2022. Um, CPI, they did show with their new calculations of how to do it, which is craziness. They have slow, showed a slow. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I am not the person doing calculations in the calculator and changing the calculations right when we actually need to do calculations. Um, energy prices have either way, even with their new math and their new way of calculating, everything has still gone up. Energy prices have increased 30% according to their new math. Food prices went up 9.4. Almost, almost 10%. Um, highest since 1981. Um, how about new cars? New cars uh, averaged 13.2%. They went up. 
Um, CPI has gone up 0.3% on, on a monthly basis. This might actually be more if you use the old calculations of how they used to do calc CPI before we actually needed to do math. So I just want to throw that out there because they have tried to change it, but we can still see with our eyes and our in our pocketbooks what we are paying for all of these things. Um, people, we understand that we are not going to back to that pre-pandemic level. It's going to remain above that 2%, which is not good. By the way, in case you want to know, fun <laughs> facts, um, inflation is a normal thing as normal, as well as growth of the market. The general growth and the general inflation of prices going up, we like to see in economics as pi. I know that's crazy, huh, math people? So I want to throw that out there as pi. So anything above pi, bad. Anything below pi, good. So this is where our basic number is. And don't ask me why pi is important for this, but it is. So anyway, I don't know if you knew about pi. Yes, uh, therefore, <laughs> Central bank, central bank projection for 2020 was about the economic growth went oh down. God. Their prediction was four, and uh, now they're predicting 2.8. That is means lower than we have 1.2 percent lower than what we were thinking about the economic growth. Now, lots of things are happening in this world: the war with Russia, um, oil, and like dealing with oil prices. We are becoming regional players again, so countries are kind of going back to norms and saying we have to do things for ourselves, which isn't a bad thing, but it's something that's going to take a couple years to fix. And in the meantime. All of these things, plus the Fed forcing this inflation uh, recession coming at us, but increasing those interest rates, selling those bonds, selling the reserve ratio, this is going to cause what? Recession. Right, and that is going to affect everybody's bottom line. So we're talking about bond markets, treasury yield notes, um, they've all climbed, they're all going up because we're selling them. Experts are doing what? What are they forecasting? I don't know. You tell me. You Experts are Experts forecast 30 fixed years. Rates are going to vary between 4.8 to 5.5 to the 2022. We're hoping that is true because the Fed is having two more meetings in June and July. And if they increase those rates again, we could be into a harder, a hard, it's not a soft landing at that point, which is what they want. It's a hard landing. What do I mean by that? Therefore, basically what my wife said, we're going to go to economy shock, which basically caused by a spiking the mortgage rate that actually affect by the Federal Reserve Policy and Comedy FOMC. Right. So these people in Washington are directly affecting your home purchase and how much you're going to pay monthly. So and then that as a result, at least hopefully it should soften the market and the price growth will start to decelerate instead of accelerating. And basically, uh, we, we, what what that's what we want to yeah, say. Exactly, no? we want to we want to make sure that everything just becomes normal. Um, and as we've and learned, this decade is level. not normal. We're going these crazy everything. Nobody would have predicted pandemic, war with Russia, and we were hoping oil, to go back and all again. of these things. We were hoping we said normal, but now who knows what i just let's hope everything is normal that's what i'm saying let's let's start let's start with forget all this craziness let's go with a normal a new normal thank you for watching our uh, your our youtube channel Absolutely. We love and that you're here. we love to get the feedback from you the information that we put hours and hours and be happy to help uh, a study and self-study and if you are in the greenville area in pitt county aiden winterville farmville we love talking to you guys Just call so us call us we love shopping for homes is what we do and we do all this stuff does affect our our job and you're buying a house and thank you for the best being best audience yes, and talk to you soon and have a wonderful weekend guys bye bye, bye.